Hi, welcome to another edition of Azure Every Day. I'm Paul Turley, Principal Consultant here at Pragmatic Works. With the COVID-19 coronavirus outbreak that uh, is uh, well in flight right now, I wanted to see how we can learn from this data and maybe make some proactive decisions. Uh, of course, this is affecting us personally, our families, and of course, business, and that's all interconnected. So how can we be proactive? How can we learn from this data? Well, working with uh, some of my colleagues here at Pragmatic Works, uh, we found that there's lots of data available. One set of data that was very consumable is um, daily updates about worldwide uh, outbreaks, cases, deaths, recovery rates that was curated um, by the um, computer science and engineering group at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. Let me show you what I've uh, created here. So this is a report that I've uh, published publicly. Uh, I just this is a, a was a convenient way to make this available on my personal blog. This link right here will take you to this report. Now I'm going to actually switch over to uh, this report published in my Power BI tenant. We're going to quickly take a look at some of the insights gained. So if we take a look at case trends over time on this report page, you can immediately see that as of the current date today, as I'm recording this that there have been about 215,000 outbreaks. That's a 9% change over yesterday. There have been 83,000 recoveries and just shy of 9,000 deaths worldwide. Here you can see the global trend. If we break that down, you can see um, that these are the cases by location and by country. And by far, China has the greatest number of cases with about 81,000. Here we can see this on a map, and this is clickable, so we can see the actual locations within China. These are uh, Chinese provinces with the, the number of cases. Now I want to go back and uh, drill into this data, and I would encourage you to take a close look at this report and think about how you can use this in your business and, and get insights that help you make decisions. Now we're working with a couple of clients that um, want to see how this is affecting things like their orders, their supply chain, their uh, employees, and be able to respond to that proactively. So if we go down to the recovery rate, if we go down to the recovery rate, we see some things that are very insightful. Again, worldwide, the orange line represents recovery rate. That's the uh, recovered cases um, over the confirmed cases. And you can see that worldwide, we actually reached a point uh, just a few days ago where recovery was actually higher than, um, than the rate of, of new cases. However, that's on the decline. A little bit of silver lining here. If we click on China, which by far has the largest number of cases, you can see that the recovery is actually on the decline, meaning that there um, are 86% recovered cases compared to new confirmed cases. Uh, I wanted to dig a little bit deeper, and this is an example of where you can see that um, sometimes we don't always find what we're looking for, but if we keep looking at our data, and maybe we can even use things like machine learning and other data science um, techniques to help us look for correlation and be able to make forecasts. The first thing that we see as we look at world population where the outbreaks are actually taking place is that San Marino, this is in the uh, uh, region around Italy, not a good place to be right now in terms of outbreaks. However, this calculation, the confirmed cases per capita, is being skewed quite a bit because the population of this region is actually very, very low. They only had one case just a few days ago. They have 119 cases as of yesterday, and that brings our confirmed cases per capita up very high. Uh, Holy See, another very small region with a small population. Liechtenstein, which is in the uh, area around Bavaria in Germany near Austria, um, very high rate of, of cases there. 
And what's interesting is based on the data that we have, population density doesn't yet seem to be a factor. And that's not to say that it couldn't be in the future. Right now, based on the data that we have, population density doesn't seem to be a driver behind um, the number of new cases. On this page, we can see the changes in confirmed cases. You can choose the number of days that you want to look back, so just change that horizon. Right now, we're looking at changes that have occurred in the past 10 days. So if we look at this chart down here, you can see that 10 days ago, Italy had 7,375 cases, but in the last 10 days since then, we currently have uh, 35,000 cases, so an extremely high growth rate there. And if we click on Italy, you can see in this chart over here that we can actually visualize that change. Ooh, not really good news. Let's look at trends by country so we can compare the um, top 50 countries in terms of uh, the number of new cases. Now immediately we see that China is overshadowing everyone. So in order to see these other countries, we want to remove China. So I use this slicer over here. I'm going to select all countries and then I'm going to hold down control and click on China. That will remove China from this chart. And now I can see the top five countries excluding China. And then if I want to see details for this country, I can right click choose drill through go to the details man, man go to the details matrix and then that shows me that that's Italy and I can expand Italy we we don't have states or provinces for Italy but you can see that that number 35,700 cases um, I I hope that this is uh, helpful in a production scenario, we could bring this data into, let's say, uh, Azure Data Lake with Azure Data Factory. Um, we could then cleanse the data, and then that could be integrated with business data to find correlation, make forecasts, and uh, be able to make proactive decisions based on this critical information. If you need help, please use the links below. Thank you for watching Azure Every Day.